Hi guys, in the previous tutorial, I showed you how to make this rusty text. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make this rusty text with welding and sparks and fire. Um, these project files, by the way, will be available on my website. Um, you will need to hit subscribe and go to the website, uh, put in your email address and you can download any project from that site. Um, I hate spam, so I will not be spamming you. Let's get into it. Make sure you're over your clip. Click on it, right click and hit open in the Fusion page. First thing we need is a particle emitter, a particle directional force, and a particle renderer. We're going to connect those all together. I'm going to take the particle renderer and connect it to this merge like that, and it will create another merge. Now we've got particles, if I play that, you can see particles are coming out, but we're gonna make them better. So we're actually gonna make our own. And the way we do that is we're gonna drag in a um, fast noise, click on it, come over to the image section, turn off auto resolution, change that from 128 to 128. And then what we're gonna do is add a rectangular mass to that. Put it in the window by clicking the dot, because it's right back there, so make sure it's unfit. You can use zoom, control the middle mouse to zoom in and out. Uh, what we need to do is make sure you're on frame zero and take the height right down to something, say like that, and take the width out so it's almost touching the edge. Just gonna check the fast noise by clicking on it. So what I wanna do is I wanna increase the scale. Let's just bring the contrast down a little bit as well. Right, now what we need to do is make sure we're on frame zero. Click, uh, make sure you're on the rectangle as well. Click on the width, create a keyframe, go forward 25 frames and click another keyframe and then take it down to it's almost vanished, somewhere like that. Then what we're gonna do is click on the spine tool, make sure you've got it selected, hit zoom to fit, go to this one here and it will select all the keyframes Hit S to smooth, and then this one here will loop it. So just click on that. And what you'll get is this. Now, believe it or not, we need two of those. And the easiest way to do it is just select them, right click on one, copy, control V to paste. On this rectangle, we're gonna come, make sure you've got it selected, come up to the keyframes, drop this down. And what we're gonna do is select those and then just move them over a little bit to just offset them. We now need to bring in a merge and connect that merge in. And then if I try and connect this to the emitter, it won't have it. And the reason for that is we need to go to the style menu where it says point, we need to change that to bitmap. And now when we press play on that, we get a horrible thing where all the uh, images are coming in out sideways. And that's an easy fix. We just need to go to the particle emitter Go to the controls, go down to rotation, turn off always face camera and change it to relative to motion. And then we get this. Now, I can't remember all the things I did in the previous uh, composition, but I did create a cheat sheet. I know what I did for the size. So let's go to the region. The sphere is a bit too big. So we're going to change that down to 0.00. .00. 4388 and it gives us that. Then what we're going to do is going to lift it up, bring it across here like so. We're now going to go to the control panel, go to my cheat sheet and for the number I had 25. For the variance it was at 56. So basically that's a 56% chance of it uh, going in uh, creating more or less if you know what I mean. Uh, lifespan is a weird one. You can have it short at 20 frames if you want uh, a different kind of welding torch. I actually had it at 60. Uh, lifespan uh, variance, nothing. But this one here, position variance, is very important and I've highlighted it in red. And the reason for that is watch what happens if I increase that in size. You see that? Now it is a bit of a weird one, so I actually kept it at 0.01 like that so we gave it a bit of variance there and under velocity I kept it at zero but on the variance again I did a kind of a 
50% chance that it would, uh, or not 50% chance, but 0.057 chance of it going all over the place. Oh, also temporal dis distribution. Uh, we need to change that from all at the same time to randomly distributed. Now, velocity variance of done angle variance. Let's go to angle variance. I changed that to 326, angle Z to 262, and angle Z variance to 245. And what we're talking about there basically is um, as they're falling down, we're, how they move in the angular direction. And on the X variance down here, I changed that to 529, like so. Let's play that back. Looking pretty good. Let's go to the style menu. Under style, we need, now need to go to the color controls. What we need to do is we need to go down to color over life. We're going to keep the first one as white, but if you just click here, we're going to change that one to yellow. What we're doing essentially is, we're going to add another one, is as particles, hot particles, uh, uh, go through their life, they go from white to yellow to red, and they kind of go down to an orange. And eventually what they do is they go, they actually go down to a black. So I'm going to connect one here, and we're going to make that black. Not that it's actually black, what it really means is it, it just fades off. Let's play that back. So cool. Right, now we need to play with the particle renderer. So click on the particle renderer, and what we're going to do is actually increase this low value here to 0.5. Like that. We're going to also nudge the blur a little bit, not too much, and that will give us that, which is cool. Then what we're going to do is on the particle renderer, we're going to hit shift space bar, and we're looking for a glow, which is that one there. Then what we're going to do is going to go shift space bar again, and we're going to add a CC color corrector. And on this color corrector, what we're going to do is just nudge the gain up a little bit like that. Then we're actually going to click on that color corrector, shift space bar, and we're going to add another color corrector. And the reason I've done that, because if you don't like the overall colors that are coming from the particles, what you can do is you can actually go here and actually influence the way the colors are being done. So if you want them more orange, you can do that or just give them, you know, just a little bit of a hint like that. So let's play that back. Right, before I animate that, I'm actually going to duplicate it. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all these nodes here. We're going to right click on one and hit group. Click on the group, right click and hit copy, blank area, control V. Now what we're going to do is we are going to go to this particle render, right click, copy, and instead of paste, we're going to hit paste instance, which is control shift V. I'm going to connect that in like that. Now we're going to do the same for the glow. Paste instance, connect in, color corrector. And this final one here, copy and paste instance. We're then going to move this media out out of the way and take this and connect it in like that. And now what you'll find is both particles are actually sitting in the same positions. So we need to change that. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this group here, go down to the particle emitter, make sure it's in the right hand window. It doesn't always come up straight away. So go over there and go to region and then what we're going to do is make sure you're on frame zero and just move it off in the y-axis somewhere over here like that now let's animate the first one so we're going to go to group one it will click go to the particle emitter and then what we're going to do make sure you're on frame zero go to the region tab hit a keyframe on x and y then we're going to go to the end frame by clicking this one and what we're going to do is we're going to move it down the Y offset. You may need to use the control key to do that, guys. Right, let's animate the other group. One thing you need to do when uh, you're dealing with particles is both particle systems actually look the same. So we need to fix that. So click on the particle emitter, come to the control panel and hit reseed here. And then what it will do is it offset the particles to make it look better. 
So on this one, I'm gonna have the animation actually go the other way. I'm gonna to go to frame zero, make sure I'm on the region tab, and I'm gonna pull the, the Y all the way down to the bottom, holding the control key, like so, and just move it across in the X, like that. And remember to hit a keyframe, because I just did it and forgot to do it. Then we're gonna to go to the end frame, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna move it up in the Y, and then move it across in the X like that. Now what will happen is, is it won't be accurate because you can already see that halfway across the line, it's gone off the text. So we'll go to frame say 160 just here. And what we'll do is we'll zoom in and we'll just move the X across like that. We'll go down to say frame 120, do the same thing again, just make sure it's actually on the text. Go down every couple of frames, do the same thing again, just move it across. Actually, the first frame's not even in the right place. Let's move that across as well. About there. There we are. Now, when we play that back, we get this. So that is really cool, guys. I hope you enjoyed that, this tutorial. Uh, if you did, uh, leave me a comment and a like below and hit that subscribe button. Like I say, all these tutorials uh, will be available on my website for downloading. If you've got any comments, also leave those below. I love reading them. And if you've got any ideas for any tutorials you'd like me to do, also leave it below. And I'll see you in the next one.